loaded in a, a WAV file called toms.wav um, and I've stored it in a variable called IP and the sound is a sequence of drum beats which were recorded at 44,100 samples per second which is CD quality So in that sound file there was um, seven drum beats and every odd drum beat was of one type of drum and the even drum beats were all of um, a, a second type. So there's only two different types. So if you just listen to that again just to confirm. So in this demonstration I'd like to show you how to first of all try to identify when each drum beat occurred and secondly we'd like to come up with a way of trying to um, differentiate between the different drum beats and we're going to use the two different views that you have uh, or that you're aware of the time domain view of signals and the frequency domain view so let's start off with the time domain view by looking at a plot of the entire signal so if we look at this signal here we can see that this is the original time domain and um, so we have samples which of course can be easily converted into time once you know the sampling rate uh, against amplitude and we can easily pick out each of the individual drum beats we have one two three four five six seven drum beats and each drum beat resulted in a, a, a large amplitude change when the drumstick hit the drum uh, membrane um, now, taking a look at those, we, we know from listening to it that the first drum beat was of one type, the second drum beat was of a, another type, the third beat was the same as the first, so that's type 1 as well, just label as T1, T2, um, this one here is T1 again, T2 and T1. So we've only two different types of drum beat. Uh, which we verified from listening, um, but um, each second, every second drum beat was of a particular type. Okay, so it's very easy for us to look at this time domain view, and we could easily work out exactly when each drum beat occurred by just identifying the exact sample number and converting the sample number into time using the sampling rate. So that's a very straightforward task um, and the, the feature associated with when a drum beat occurred is very very easy to pick out from the time domain signal. Now the second thing that we'd like to be able to do is to be able to differentiate between the different types. Um, so the first thing to do um, when doing that is to um, up get the uh, get the the actual drum signals, each end of the seven drum signals, into into new variables. So we'll, we'll divide the input signal into seven separate drum beats. And I've, I've done this already, um, so I'm just going to copy paste the code. There we go. So there's each of the individual drum beats. You can see that the third drum beat, for example, is from sample number 83,410 up to 120,000. So that's the range of samples over which the third drum beat occurred. Um, and we could plot that just to show you. Plot drum beat 3. Okay, so that's the the third drum beat. Uh, and each one of the drum beats was, was extracted like that. Um, now what I'd also like to do now is to plot each of those drum beats in the time domain. So I just have some code done for that as well, which I'll just copy paste and you can take a look at this later on. So um yeah if you take a look, if you pause the video, you'll be able to see exactly the code that I used to do that. Um, but here are each of the, well, I, I've plotted six out of the seven. Um, so the drum beats on the left are of one type and the drum beats on the right are of another type. So this is the first drum beat here. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth and six. So all the even drum beats are of one type and all the odd drum beats are of another type. Now looking in the time domain, so this is again, these are samples along the horizontal axis and amplitude along the 
vertical axis for each of the signals here. If we look in the time domain, um, there's no obvious features that um, differentiate between the different sounds, the different types of drum beat. Um, now if we look closely, the, there might be some subtle amplitude changes just looking at that, but one thing to do whenever you're trying to differentiate between signals is, is to use the alternative view that you have. And the alternative view is the frequency domain view. Because sometimes the differences are more obvious in one domain than in the other. So this is our time domain view and there's no particularly strong features that stand out to me. Um, so I'm just going to move into the frequency domain and see if there's any clearer, more, more uh, well, if there's any clearer features to differentiate between the two types of signals. So I've written some code once again. Um, so I've written this earlier on to save myself some time. And I'm just going to copy paste this into the into MATLAB command line. Uh, and you should take a look at the code again to see how I've done that. Now I have made use of a function called freakplot which isn't a standard MATLAB function, but I'll put it, make it available on the website if you'd like to see exactly how that function works. But once again, um, what we have here is the each of the signals, so this is drum beat number one, drum beat number two, three, four, five, and six. But this time I've plotted the signals in the frequency domain. So this is the frequency content of drum beat one, frequency content of drum beat two over here and so on. And we know from listening that um, the odd drum beats were of one type and the even drum beats are of another type. And when we look at this uh, in this view we can see that there's very clear features. Um, for example around the 100 Hz, so that's 100 Hz this point and this is 100 Hz over on these plots. Um, but you can see that there's a lot of spectral energy, as it be referred to, spectral energy um, around the 100 hertz mark for all the even drum beats. But that doesn't exist for the odd drum beats. And that's a, a very clear feature. Um, you'd also see that the magnitude is always, for example, it's always greater than 0 0.02 for the, um, for the even drum beats. Whereas doesn't reach 0 0.02 for the odd drum beats. So these are very clear features that will differentiate between the different types of drums. Um, so this is just a quick demonstration on the benefits of the frequency domain view because you're probably more comfortable with the time domain view and the, we've, been, we've introduced this frequency domain view of signals to you. And I just wanted to show you one of the benefits of it. And it's a very common task for signal processing engineers and engineers in general to need to be able to differentiate between different types of signals. So when you need to, when you're well, when you're confronted with such a task, just be aware that a time domain view might be a better way to look at the signal in order to do that. Uh, to well, to be able to differentiate between different types of signals. Okay, so I hope that was of use, and I'll see you in the next presentation.